Happy holidays and welcome to Teach You Tuesday. My name is Brittany Bly. I'm the founder of Pop Shop America. You can find us anytime online at popshopamerica.com. Today we are going to do a really fun craft project. We are going to make some holiday reads. So let me show you some finished reads so we can really get some inspiration um, and get some ideas about how you want your wreath to look. And then I'm going to walk you through all the supplies. Then we're going to build one together. So let me show you some finished ones. So check out this really teeny tiny one that I've got right here. How adorable is that? So what I really love about this is that this has some really unique materials. This one uses an embroidery hoop. This one is a fall inspired wreath. Here's our little hanger right here. And this one is really similar to what we're going to build today, right? But notice how these two are really different. So we can use all of the concepts that we're learning today, and you can build one that absolutely has a different style, has a different look. Like for example, this beautiful wreath right here. This is a great vine wreath. It's huge, it's really fun to make, and it's gonna look amazing on your door. And let me show you one more. This one's really fun and out of the box too. This one is a macrame wreath, right? So we've got this beautiful macrame rope that hangs down. We have an embroidery hoop for this one as well and some gorgeous faux greenery on top. So the sky is the limit when making a wreath and you don't even have to use the materials that we're using here. For example, this metal ring makes a really cool base for a wreath as well. So if you guys are ready to start making one, everybody grab a cocktail or a coffee and let's get ready. We're gonna talk you through all the supplies that you need. So right here, I've got my wreath base. This one is a willow bark wreath base, but you could also use a grapevine. You could use a metal one like what I showed you before. Again, this is a really creative process. I'm gonna talk you through some of the big picture concepts, but yours can look really different than mine or you can make it just like mine. Whatever you choose is gonna be fun. We're definitely gonna need a glue gun. This is the best kind of glue to use to make a wreath. And for this, you'll also need a couple of extra glue sticks. If you don't have a glue gun, another type of glue, like a craft glue or a tacky glue will work as well, but a glue gun is definitely gonna be the easiest. We'll always need scissors. We're going to need this just for trimming pieces, cutting ribbon, anything like that. This is a really versatile thing that we're going to use time and time again. From here, everything is going to get super creative. So we're going to want to gather things that meet your style, that are going to look great on your door or inside of your home. For example, I have these pine and floral bundles. Everything is really holiday inspired. It's got that bright red and bright green. In addition to pine cones, we've got some little holly berries right here. I've also got some red faux flowers and some loose pine as well. Now mine is gonna be really holiday inspired but yours could actually be for any season. For example, I have these sunflowers right here that are perfect for fall. These would be so great for spring. And then we wanna think about some really fun items, right? Like cinnamon sticks, for example, dried orange slices are perfect for this. I have lots of tiny pine cones in addition to my larger pine cones. And I even have some really tiny bottle brush trees. These look super cute, right? So one thing that you're gonna notice in all of these supplies is that we have some supplies that are very large. We have other supplies that are very small. Finding supplies that have a difference in size and a difference in color is gonna make a big difference in how your finished wreath looks, right? So we definitely wanna gather some things that are larger, like for example, these ivy vines right here. I've got some eucalyptus vines here. I've also got ribbon. Lots of different thicknesses of ribbon. So we have some items that are a little bit bigger. In addition to some of these other items that I showed you that are a little bit smaller. 
Now, one of the big concepts with making a wreath is layering, right? Now, before I mentioned that we want some big items, we want some small items. Now, when you start creating your wreath, you're gonna to wanna to start with your bigger, larger items first, and then you're gonna to wanna to layer up to your smaller items or the items that you want to show off the most, those are gonna come last. So we're gonna probably start with something like, for example, this eucalyptus vine because it's nice and big, some of this ribbon right here. Those are the types of things that we wanna start with. Then as we move forward, and we get a little closer to being done, that's when we're gonna add some of these smaller pieces like these cinnamon sticks or bottle brush trees. So I've got my wreath base in front of me, I've got my glue gun plugged in and ready to go. So we're really ready to get started. So I'm gonna start with some ribbon and I'm going to wrap this ribbon around the outside of this wreath base. Now you don't have to do this, for example, with this grapevine wreath right here, you can actually see the wreath base. It's beautiful, it's very woodsy, it feels very complete. But in a lot of cases, we wanna actually wrap this so that you don't see the wreath base at all. The best way to do that is gonna be with large greenery, or in my case, I'm gonna use this ribbon. And the reason that I'm using this ribbon is it has just a tiny bit of sparkle to it, just a tiny bit of gold, and to me that feels very holiday, and that's definitely the style and the mood that I wanna present. So I just add a tiny bit of glue from my glue gun to the end of the ribbon. Then I'm gonna start the winding process. Now all I'm gonna do is just take that ribbon and just wind it around. Now again, this is not something that you have to do. For example, you could also make a bow with this ribbon. You can use it to hang off and just to decorate one edge. There's a lot of possibilities about how you use all of your different materials. But this is what I'm choosing to do with mine. So as I wrap it, I'm making sure that it's nice and snug, super tight. I have the edge glued down so it's affixed and I don't have to worry about that at all. And this is actually probably gonna take the longest of any of the steps that we're doing today is covering the base layer of your wreath blank, your wreath base. So I'm just winding and winding as I go. And it's just giving that professional, beautiful little sparkle of gold that I've got in the ribbon. We wanna make sure that we keep it untangled as we go. Now again, you don't have to make yours like mine. We have so many different wreath making tutorials on the website at popshopamerica.com. We have lots of wreath tutorials where you can see um, ribbon that's tied in little bows. There's a million different bow making techniques. So there's lots of options here. And I'm just gonna keep winding and pulling it nice and taut. We wanna keep it nice and snug as we wind. I'm untwisting it as I go. And with the thickness of this ribbon, I might not even get all the way around the wreath, but if that happens, I'm gonna show you a really sneaky trick to where no one will ever know that you didn't have all of the ribbon to cover it. So again, we're starting with our largest items. We're starting with, in this case, the ribbon. We can start with some large sections of ivy or pine. Start with your largest items first and the items that you want to be in the background of your wreath, not the foreground of your wreath, right? We're working from back to front. So there's one other thing that I wanna talk about when we're making wreaths that's really important to making one that's stunning, one that looks professional. And that's a concept that we actually talked about last month in our vision board workshop, and it's called the rule of thirds. It's a concept that's used in graphic design, it's used in making art, 
And basically the rule of thirds is when artists are working or when graphic designers are working on a piece, they usually break up the space, they break up that object into threes, right? So instead of breaking it up in half, you know, creating something that would be symmetrical, they actually break up any space into three sections, which is really pleasant to the eye. It's actually something that you see in all of the reads, all of the finished reads that I showed you, but you might not have even noticed that about the wreath. So I'm gonna show you those things really quickly once we get this ribbon attached. And so you can investigate further. So I basically got to the edge of my ribbon. I only got about halfway around. So for me, I would want maybe like two rolls of ribbon. But I want to show you this sneaky trick. I want to show you something we can do if you don't have enough ribbon, right? The thing about wreath making, it's all about having fun, troubleshooting, really having fun with these supplies, seeing what looks good, and then improvising from there. So this is the kind of thing that's gonna come up when you're making a wreath too, right? You're gonna have maybe a certain amount of pine or a certain amount of faux flowers. And it's all about figuring out that placement, figuring out what works, right? So take a look, I got about halfway around with my ribbon. Now what am I gonna do? How am I gonna cover this up? Well, I'm gonna do a sneaky trick where I'm actually gonna use this big, beautiful branch of eucalyptus start to place it along the other side. Add some glue just to the end, and I'm gonna attach it to the blank side of the wreath base so that both sides are covered. Now, if you notice, every time I'm adding glue, I'm actually adding it to the object itself that I'm attaching to the wreath base. I'm not placing the glue directly on the wreath base. And there's a reason for that. When you're attaching an item, you wanna kinda of take a look and see where it's going to attach, how it's gonna look, how it's gonna fit. But your wreath base, regardless of what you choose, whether it's a metal hoop, an embroidery hoop, this grapevine wreath base like what we've got here, or my willow bark that I have in front of me, they're all very windy. They're made up of all these tiny pieces that are woven together. They're quite small, but the pieces that we're adding are a lot larger. So it's gonna be so much easier for you to add the glue to the piece that you're attaching, in this case, the eucalyptus, and it's gonna be a little bit harder to attach it to the wreath base. So for this, now I'm gonna push it around in a circle. And I'm gonna see about where that's gonna hit. See which piece is kind of on the bottom. And I'm gonna add a lot of glue, many of these little basically pushes of hot glue gun onto lots of different areas. This is gonna be a little bit trickier to figure out exactly where it's gonna land, exactly how it's going to hold together. Now, because I'm bending this around in a circle, right, I'm actually altering the form of this eucalyptus slightly, I'm gonna need to hold it in place for a few seconds. Hot glue, it dries so fast, which is why it's ideal for this project. Tacky glue or anything like that is gonna dry a little bit slower. It just means that you'll have to hold it in place for a little bit longer, but that's totally okay, that'll work too. You can always lift your hand, see how it's working out. If you need to add more, you can always add more. That is never a problem. So for me, I'm adding a little bit more. So I'm actually putting my glue gun underneath these faux vines, this faux eucalyptus, to where the eucalyptus is firmly touching the wreath. And then I'm gonna hold it in place. And just take a look. Now this eucalyptus is maybe a little bit big. Maybe I'll even trim it down slightly or kind of fold it into place a little bit better. But just take a look at how I covered that willow bark so perfectly. I didn't have any problems with covering that willow bark. So now you can't see the wreath base at all. So now maybe the trick is just trimming it up, making it look really pretty. And we'll move on to starting to add some of these smaller items to our wreath. Now again, um, you don't have to make yours like mine. 
You don't have to add ribbon around in a coil like how I did. You don't have to add this eucalyptus. These are basically just the ideas of the types of items that you're gonna to wanna to add first. You wanna add your biggest pieces first, then start to add your smaller items on top. So we can think about all these other pieces that I showed you. For example, this pine right here is really beautiful. That would be a really great thing to make a background. We have all of these beautiful faux flowers right here that are all very holiday themed. That would be really great for your base as well. So again, I'm just kind of cleaning mine up a little bit. I want to make this eucalyptus look really nice. And now I'm going to take all of these extra pieces that I just trimmed off. And I'm just going to fill this in a little bit. Make it look a little bit more even. Not quite as large as how it looked before. When everything was really spread out and big and bold like it was a minute ago. Now, as you're working, you might notice that your hot glue gun is going to create these like little thin threads of threads of glue. Now, you don't need to pull those away quite yet. It's actually best if you don't because your hot glue gun is still setting. Um, you don't have to hold anything in place while, while the setting process is going on, but it's going to take maybe 15 or 20 minutes for it to be completely solid, completely held together. Then you can go back and peel off all those threads. If for any reason, as you peel the threads, if you have any problems with pieces coming off, like what just happened here, totally okay. All you have to do is just reattach it. The most important thing with this project, you know, more than anything else, we definitely want this to be creative. We want to take a look at everything we're making as we go, see what looks good, and really kind of place everything before we attach it permanently. We want this to be fun and we want this to be relaxing. So don't worry too much about any little mistakes or anything that you're not happy with. You can always fix it and change it as you go. So now I'm taking a look and this definitely looks a little bit more even over here, but I think it still looks a little bulky and kind of crazy over here. So when something like that happens, you can kind of twist it around in a circle, see if there's like a make it work kind of angle. And for me, I just, I think it's just a little bit too bulky right here. So I'm just going to go back through it and just spin it out a little bit more. Just using my scissors to trim it up. So the idea here is that even if you're using these big materials like vines and big greenery, all of this can still be altered. So just like I'm kind of cutting this piece of vine as I go, this is something that you can do too. You can definitely make it your own. So I've got just a few more pieces and I'm kind of fixing up. Oh, I think I made this way better. I think we have a winner after this one piece. Now I'm going to attach them and just fill it in a little bit more. And that's part of what's going to make it look nice and even. Oh yeah, this is looking cuter. I keep tucking. I'm not sure if you can see this on camera, but I'm actually taking a moment to tuck the stem underneath the leaf so that the stems don't show, right? Those are a little bit bulkier. They're not quite as cute. So I'm actually just tucking them underneath. And that really helps a lot. I think this is looking way better. Oh yeah, here we go. Now here we go. I am liking this a whole lot more. I feel like this kind of has a natural element of maybe this part being the bottom and this part being the top, right? So as you build out your wreath, make sure you take a moment see how things are going. This is a creative process. So sometimes things come out maybe just a little bit different than what you expect. So take a moment along the way to just kind of see where you're at, see what's looking good, and that's gonna help you plan your next steps. So I've got my eucalyptus on the bottom. I've got my ribbon on top. It's nice and gold and green, 
But I think the thing that's really going to make this feel very holiday and get in the spirit of the season is to add some things that have that bright red and bright green. So I've got some red flowers right here. This would be a great thing. Maybe this cinnamon stick. So take a look at how I'm placing everything. I'm not gluing it down yet. I'm just placing it where I think I want it to go. Then I'm going to attach it once I feel good about how everything looks. I definitely want to include a couple of little pine cones and something that feels very seasonal, these cute little jingle bells. And then this is really fun because if I glue this to my wreath and then attach it to my door, every time I open and close the door, I get that nice little jingle sound that I love so much. So this is definitely going to go in there. And we're just basically building out a composition. We're not attaching anything yet. We're just figuring out where these smaller pieces should go, how we want this to look. Now, naturally, again, I'm working in that rule of thirds that I keep talking about. So let's take a look really quickly. Let me show you some finished pieces and we'll talk about the rule of thirds and how I'm attaching these, where I'm attaching these and how that process is gonna work. So let's take a look at this one. So if you see this little tiny wreath right here, we're actually covering about one third of the total circle, right? Do you see how it, the little pine and the pine cones cover one third of the total circle? And it's off to the side, right? So it has a really cool angle. It's not perfectly centered. It's over to the side, which just kind of leads your eye in that really cool shape and pattern. And it makes it really beautiful and exciting to look at. Same idea here. Again, we were working on the side and I covered about one third of this wreath with these different items. Even within the items, you might notice that there's three sunflowers right here. So even inside of working with that third, I'm adding three objects at a time to really reinforce that idea of working in threes. We did the same thing over here with this large wreath. Again, working on the side, also working across one third of the total wreath. Now you don't have to work in one third, right? You could also cover two thirds of the wreath. You could add three objects across it, right? But I want you to think about grouping into three. It's really exciting stylistically. It's gonna make it look really great. Now I feel pretty good about my composition, where I'm gonna place all of these objects. I have some objects that are a little bit bigger. I have some objects that are a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna start attaching those objects. So again, we wanna figure out where everything is gonna go first. Then we want to um, attach those different items. So I've got my cinnamon stick right here. So far I have a flower. Then I have a cinnamon stick that I'm attaching. I'm not gonna add any of these vines, but I am gonna add this jingle bell. This is very cute. Still using that hot glue gun. Really, really careful. So the only thing that we're using that you might wanna concern yourself with safety-wise is the hot glue gun. So just make sure you're really careful. The tip of it always gets really hot. The glue as it comes out, of course, is heated. So we wanna be really careful there. And we continue to place these objects. So the more of these reds and greens I add, the more that this is gonna feel very holiday. So really think about your color as you're building out your wreath. Color is gonna definitely tell the story about what season it is, right? So rustic oranges and browns are gonna be perfect for fall. Bright rainbows, pinks, whites, yellows are gonna be great for spring and summer. And this red and green is just perfect for the winter.
now I'm actually feeling really good about this. I really love the way this is looking. I think that maybe if I can incorporate a little bottle brush tree, I think that that is the thing that's gonna complete this wreath. So let's talk about our concepts again. We worked from back to front. We worked with our largest items first. That's where most of our time is gonna be spent. We talked about dividing our space into three, the rule of thirds, so that you could really make a cool composition as you go, something that's really exciting and pleasing to the eye. Another concept is making sure that you feel good about what you're creating, lay down your composition before you move forward. You can always undo everything as you go. It's really a creative process. We want this to be fun and joyous. This is definitely the kind of activity that you can sip on cocktails, coffee, hang out with your friends while you're making it. And now we have our finished wreath. So the only thing that we have left now is to hang this on our door. You could also hang this in your any room that you like. Um, you can hang it inside. It doesn't have to go on a door. Basically, we've created this beautiful object that's perfect for the season. So if you loved this workshop, make sure you visit us online at popshopamerica.com. Share this video to be entered in a chance to win a kit to make your own wreath. And we'll see you next month for Teach You Tuesday.